very different to be a minority but not be treated as a minority right off the bat. But obviously now people are very aware of my race because they made it such an issue when I went to the UK, but before that, most people didn't treat me like a black woman. So that talk didn't have to happen for me. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Code Black Facts. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys know I love you and I do appreciate you. So I want to talk about this one drop rule because I think we have a, a bunch of people, uh, more so black people who are confused about the one drop rule. And so I figured I would make a quick little video. So the one drop rule was not created by black people. It was created by white people and is outdated and simply does not reflect science or social reality. Because we, black community, need the white man to tell us who we are and educate us on who is black and who is not, we still use a measurement that the white man created as the guideline for teaching us black people about our blackness as far as what and who is black the white man has been teaching us about our history for so long that we just can't bear to set our own construct or guidelines for gatekeeping blackness all right and so there are a few reasons as to why we the black community must hold on to the one drop rule and i've set aside three of my thoughts of as to why I believe, you know, we just have to hold on to that one drop rule. Because again, this is something that was not created by us. It was created by white folks and it was created hundreds of years ago. And yet and still we hold on to it with a death grip because we just can't bear, right? Not knowing or being taught by white people about who we are and who is black and who is not. All right. Many of us, not all, but many of us. So reason number one, many of us think that whiteness is the standard. All right. It's the golden rule or superior and ultimate thing to be. So that's some of us, not all of us think this way. Some of us. And this is why I believe some of us hold on to that one drop rule that white people put in place for us to measure blackness. All right. Some of us think that by being able to include whiteness, a.k.a. biracial people, into blackness, then it will somehow make us better or reflect better in the gene pool. Many completely disregard the fact that two halves from two different gene pools scientifically does not equal a whole thing. Therefore, someone who is half black and half white does not equal a whole black person. But because we must death grip anything that is non-black, many today still live by that one drop rule, no matter how far back in the bloodline or gene pool, they must go to find it. All right. Reason number two, many within the black community like the physical look of what they what has been traditionally and historically branded as whiteness. Hear me out. I said branded. All right. Tr traditionally and historically branded as whiteness. For example, mixed race women within the black community calling themselves black women is elevated and pedestalized in the black community. Although mixed race uh, women are not white, they are close to white. So the closeness to the whiteness is key. It's the skin tone, the loose curly hair, and the thin features, nose, cheeks, bones, hair, things like that. All of those things elevate those mixed race women right racially ambiguous are racially ambiguous looking women um this is also known as colorism featureism and texturism there are many dark-skinned black women who can speak more vividly towards this notion and as a brown-skinned woman myself who is on the lighter spectrum spectrum of the brown tones I understand this because I have seen it also for example 
let's take Tyreek's ex-wife, who is a multiracial woman, right? And, you know, we've heard uh, Tyrese call her his black queen. And then it's like, okay, well, if she black and I'm black and we look different, what? We're not going to play those games. We're not going to play those games. She may have a drop in her gene pool, <laughs> as if many people do, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that she's black. But it's interesting how that works out because you'll have the pro-black people who will say, well, Camilla Harris is not black, right? She can't be black. See, and this is the thing. This is why it's all a bunch of BS, you guys. This is why when it comes to gatekeeping um, uh, blackness and things like that, when it comes to uh, multi-race people, biracial people, things like that, it's all cap. Because they'll, you'll have people that will accept some, but not others. For example, Camilla Harris. Yeah, you do have people say, okay, she's a black woman, but you got a whole bunch of pro-black people who say she's not black, she's something else. And do you guys know why they say that? I'm going to be quiet for a few seconds. I want you guys to type in the comment section as to why you think they say that. They say that. Because Camilla is married to a white man. You see how that works out? You see how that works out? So because Tyrese, right, the singer, is a black man calling his non-black woman a black queen, right? She's accepted. Oh, yeah, she's black. Yeah, she got, you know, this, it's, the one drop is there. But then Camilla, who also has the one drop, oh, well, she's not. She's something else. Do you, do you guys see how that works? And this is, again, we do this, not all of us, but many of us do this because, again, we have to death grip whiteness. Anything that will get us closer to that, for many of us within the black community, we death grip it. We live by it. It is the Bible. All right? All right, so um, reason number three, there are privileges for those who are mixed race or biracial or evenly racially ambiguous looking within the black community, right? The notion of good hair, pretty eyes, yellow bone, all of those things come with privileges, all right? And we're not going to sit up here and act like we don't know. I'm not going to sit up here and allow anybody to gaslight. We know what that is. Right. There would be no such thing as a good hair because within the black community. When someone says, oh, well, she got good hair. Traditionally, what that meant was that you don't have nappy hair. Traditionally, what that meant is that you had hair that looked like Holly Berry. It was the texture of a Holly Berry or a Tracy Ellis Ross or somebody else like that. It wasn't like mine's. Go to my community tab and look at my pictures. All right. What you will see is a black woman. Nobody will ever mistake me for anything other than a black woman. You can look at me and tell I am a black woman, even though I am a brown skin on the, you know, the lighter spectrum of brown black woman. I am a black woman. You can look at me and tell there is no racial anything there. Right. So we're not going to act like we don't know what blackness looks like. But for many of us, we will. We'll say, oh, Cardi B is black. Oh, a, a Big Lotto's black. Oh, no, they're mixed race women. These women are mixed race. They have their own category. And this is why I support mixed groups who want to come up with their own racial category. I support it wholeheartedly. Because you're not going to look at me and then look at Holly Berry and say that we are both black women. That's not how that go. Based off an old construct that your oppressor, the ones y'all got a problem with, the ones y'all say X, Y, and Z, made up. It, this is why I say it's all cap. We, we, we want to we wanna apply that rule on some things but not apply it on all things. And that's an issue for me. That's an issue for me. And that's why so much confusion is created. And that's why you got so many people running around here that don't know what a black woman look like or a black man look like. They just don't know. And yes, we come in all skin uh, tones. Yes, we come in all looks and, 
and things like that absolutely but just because we come in all different looks and skin tones and things like that does not mean that we don't that there should no there we should we have to live by what white people set in place hundreds of years ago because they're smarter and because they know better and because they got to teach us about us and our history come on you guys that's embarrassing we are smart enough we can create our own constructs for what is black what blackness is and gatekeeping blackness it's okay to be biracial it's okay to have your own group it's okay to identify with both halves not just the black half because of something that racist white people set in place many years ago and for the record you guys there was no such thing before the 1700s i believe there was only two races Either you were white or you were non-white. There were no such thing as these different racial groups that we have now. And way back in the day, how they did it was that um, either people were identified by the land that they were from. They were identified by their family name, things like that. But there was no such thing as, you know, a Hispanic, as Cuban, as that did not exist before the 1700s. Right. Um, you know, and they did create when they started to create um, racial classifications, um, you know, there was a such thing as a mulatto. Right. That was a mixed race person back then. And typically that was a person that was mixed with black and white. All right. Um, and there was actually a whole mulatto class. And there's a book. Um, I can't think of a book right now. But anyways, back then. You know, the people knew exactly who was who. And the only group of people who get confused about this, see, the Hispanics, they don't get confused about who's Hispanic. Uh, white people don't get confused about who's white. Um, Arab people don't get confused about who's Arab. Um, we are the only ones that get confused about who's black. We're the only group. Everybody knows what whiteness looks like, being Hispanic, Asian, all of, they all know what it looks like. They all know how to identify that. But when it comes to us, we just don't know. We all confused. We just don't know. All right. And so um, that's all I have for you guys. Go ahead and jump in the comment section. Speak your mind. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know what you think about this video. Also, um, if you are new to my channel welcome and i do invite you to subscribe if you're not new and you're coming back thank you for coming back i hope you guys learned something from the video i hope i sparked any kind of interest or a thought or a new perception and uh, that's all i have for you guys you guys be safe bye